Free response question numero uno. Uh, this problem I hear is very, very, very typical for a AP pre-calculus practice exam. You see them a lot. So this is not something that I just pulled out of thin air. It's very typical for an AP pre-calc exam, or at least a practice test. So you might see one like it in May. You never know. The blades of this fan rotate in a counterclockwise direction and complete 20 rotations every second. Point P is at the top of tip of one of the fan blades and is located directly above the center of the fan at time T equals zero seconds. So tip, top, don't stop, DJ, blow my speakers up. Kesha. Point P is 12 inches from the center of the fan. Okay. And the center of the fan is 30 inches above the floor. Okay. As the fan blades rotate at a constant speed, the distance between P and the floor periodically decrease and increase as seen right here. So right now... We're at the very beginning, it's at the top, then the middle, then the bottom, then the middle, then the top, and then middle, bottom, middle, top, blah, 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 blah. Spinning around, spinning around, spinning around. The sinusoidal function H models the distance between P and the floor in inches as a function of time T in seconds. The graph of H and its dashed midline for two full cycles are shown, as seen here. Five points A through E are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated, and no axes are presented. So, problem A is to determine the possible coordinates uh, T, H of T, so like X, Y, for the five points A, B, C, D, and E. So here is what they look like. Now, the nice thing about this problem is we know that P starts at the top, and so it gave us A to start at the top. So let's do this. Let's build our points knowing very well that the X value is T, which is time, and the Y value is going to be the height at a given moment. Let's focus on time first, and we're going to build all of our points by focusing on the time, and then we'll worry about the height when we have to. Okay, not the most traditional way of doing it, but this is the way I want to do it. I'm starting at zero. Now, it rotates 20 times per second, which means it completes an entire cycle every 1 20th of a second, which means you're going to be 1 20th. Now, to find B, C, and D, you are comparing where B, C, and D are versus E. And then you're going to use a fraction to multiply it to 1 20th. So, if I wanted to compare B to E, B is one quarter of its way to E. So, what we would say is B is going to be one quarter of 1 20th of a second, which is 1 80th. So we will sneak a 1 80th right there. C is halfway in between. So C is 1 half of 1 20th of a second, which is going to be 1 40th of a second. Last but not least, D is 3 quarters of its way to E. So 3 quarters of 1 20th of a second is going to be 3 80ths of a second. And I don't know why I put a 40 there. Uh, silly me. Let's erase it. Got my mini eraser out. So let's see if I can do that without destroying too much. A. Hey. All right. So let me quick write that out, 3 80ths. So we have our T values. Now, to finish these points out, these coordinates out, I need the height. What do I know? I know that the middle is 30 inches off the floor. I also know that the distance between the middle and that point is 12. So the very maximum is going to be 30 plus 12, which is 42. And the very minimum is going to be 30 minus 12, which is 18. So at the very tippy top, we're at 42. At the very middle, we're at 30. At the very bottom, we're at 18. At the very middle, we're at 30 again. And at the very tippy top, we're at 42 again. So determine the possible coordinates for possible coordinates for A, B, C, D, and E. Well, A ended up being 0, 42. B ended up being 1 80th, 30. C ended up being 1 40th, 18. D ended up being 3 80ths, 30. And E ended up being 1 20th. 42. 
Now, again, these are all possible points. Technically, there's an infinite amount, but I think most people would rather start out with zero. I think that's the best way to go. So problem A, Denzo. Problem B, find the altitude of the data. This is much friendlier. The altitude is literally half the distance of the total height. And you calculate that by doing maximum minus the minimum all divided by two. So the maximum height was 42 minus the minimum height, which is 18, all divided by 2. 42 minus 18 is 24, and 24 over 2 is 12, which makes sense because we were told that the distance between the center and the tip of the blade is 12 inches. So it should make sense that halfway in between is 12 inches, which means halfway in between is 12 inches. So that's that. Last but not least, what cosine function fits the data? Now, I'm glad we are being asked to cosine because it starts out by looking like a cosine. So we don't have to worry about any horizontal translation or anything like that. No horizontal shift. We're not moving left or right. So the equation that I like to use is y equals cosine or a cosine parentheses b times x minus c close it close it plus d. A is for amplitude, B is going to be 2 pi over the period, C is a vertical translation, which I'm not going to worry about, and D is the midline. Now we know what the amplitude is. It's 12, so that's my amplitude. B is going to be the hard part. Now B, again, is 2 pi over the period. My period is how long it takes to complete a full cycle, which I wrote up here is 1 20th of a second. So this is going to be 2 pi over 1 20th. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 20 and 20. That way that kills these guys out. And 2 pi times 20 is going to be 40 pi. So that's going to be my B. My midline is right there given to me. I mean, it even tells me that the dashed line is the midline. So my midline, D, is going to be 30. Since I'm not shifting left or right because this is a cosine, and cosine, a positive cosine, starts at the very maximum, I'm in good shape. C is going to be 0. So let's put this together. Y equals A, which is 12, cosine, parentheses, B, which is 40 pi, parentheses, x minus 0, so I wasted a little bit of time there, plus 30. So to clean this up and finish this problem out, y equals 12 cosine 40 pi. x minus 0 is just x, so I'll just put x there, plus 30. So like I said, this is a very traditional AP pre-calculus practice problem. Whether you see it in May, I don't know. But chances are you will see a problem like this at some point down the road. So I hope this helps.